Good morning. Good morning. morning. Good morning. Thank you, Toya. Appreciate you guys. Y'all doing a fantastic job this morning. I'm loving all the takeaways and uh, how you guys are coming in so strong. That's that's the part that keeps standing out to me. They're getting stronger and stronger. But that's what happens when we, you know, come together, uh, you know, to work as a team. Um, you know, we don't, we eliminate weaknesses. You know, you, you, a lot of time when you sharing your testimony or you walk in boldness, it helps another person to continue their journey as well, or to get their foot in the water, uh, to get moving. So y'all keep doing what you're doing. Other people are watching what they say. Some little Chad is watching you out there and, uh, I just celebrate each one of you. Well, it is Friday. We, uh, go, we, um, um, we're going into our breakout sessions, uh, chatting with champions. But before we do that, will y'all please grab that link and wake up your neighbor and invite them to come in with us this morning? This is sometimes the best part of it when y'all can go into uh, the individual sessions and talk to the leaders and you guys go in to be leaders as well. You know, uh, invite them to come on in and be a part of it so that we can hear your voices, so we can check in on each other, see how we're doing. And uh, so we can move forward. Amen. Uh, after the breakout session, we'll come back in. We'll get started. We got a little bit of a surprise taking place right afterwards. Uh, we have our stay in place that's going to kick off uh, as soon as y'all come out of the breakout session. And then we will go into the message for this morning. We're talking about learning from failures on today once again. So I'm excited about that. But before we get started, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. And uh, then we will release you into your rooms. Uh, Mr. Marcus Wade will be uh, hosting one. Mrs. Faith Davis will be in the others. And y'all will be the co-host in there. So remember, 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 give everybody a chance to share. Yeah, you know, kind of limit your conversations to, you know, when you hear yourself talking, remember you may have talked too long. And then also remember your neighbors in the room. There are other people that may want to share. So give them an opportunity to do that as well. Okay, not going to cut your conversation off, but just be mindful uh, that, you know, a lot of times we'll get a little nervous and we'll just go on and on and on. But let's remember to give everybody a chance to uh, share in the rooms so that we can hear all those beautiful voices out there. Amen. Amen. All right. Father, thank you so much. We have made it to this Friday. I think it is March 22nd. Oh my God. Thank you so much for just gracing us with your presence always. Father, we just know that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. There are so many presents. Uh, pleasures, Lord God, at your right hand forevermore. So we come declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing in this day with you. No matter what this day has in store, we're still rejoicing with you. As a matter of fact, we're going to get up this morning and command our own morning. We're not waiting for the morning to come in and release whatever it's going to release. We're going to get ahead of it, and we're going to proclaim what it is that the word has to say, because there is a perceived Leading action that comes behind our words. So help us to open up our mouth this morning to proclaim what it is that we desire and because we shall have whatsoever we say. So Father, help us to keep a watch over our mouth. Help us to keep a watch over that old mind that will just go into all kinds of directions and then help us to remember we'll win if we do not quit. So Father, thank you this morning. Thank you for all the facilitators all week long. Dr. Wade, Mr. Harlan Bell, Mrs. Faith Davis, Mr. Joe Williams. We want to thank you so much, God, for preparing them for the messages. Father, I pray that you would pour back into them, Lord God, the same measure they poured out. As a matter of fact, give them a little extra this morning. They need an extra push this week just for making that sacrifice. We thank you so much for the facilities, for the hosts that have come in this morning, this week, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Kathy Mitchell, uh, Mrs. Felicia Williams, Mrs. Regina Oliver, Mrs. Uh, Latoya Hansen. Bless them and bless them indeed, God. Thank you for all of those that have shared their testimonies. Thank you for those that have given others the extra push. Thank you for helping us know, Lord God, we are all, we stand as one, as a unit in this room. And Father, no one is greater than the other. So Father, we ask this morning that your hand be with us as we go through these breakout sessions. Lord, help us to open up our mouth and share, you know, maybe something that said this morning that causes us to, you know, I think I, I think I need to jump in the water. 
you know, um, that, that may be what, what's, what the next step is. I got to jump in the water. I can't keep standing on the outside, you know, help me to jump in the water. Help me to see what it is that you see. Help me to, you know, be able to receive what it is that everybody else is receiving in the room. And Father, we give you glory. Thank you already in advance for what you're going to do. Bless this message that's going to come forward afterwards. And Father, we'll be careful to give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. And we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right. Let me see who's trying to message me. All right. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's get these breakout sessions uh, moving over here. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it does it on its own again. Like there it did. Let's see. It did it again. All right. Let me get Faith moved out of uh, one room. Let me move her and Marcus into different rooms. Uh, two, 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 two. Move two. There we go. All right. Y'all ready to go? Let's see. Let me make sure. Uh, I need to move one person so we'll have an even um, exchange on here. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Um, let's do this. Um. There we go. All right. All right. We're ready to go. Y'all enjoy. We'll be back in the room. Remember, the rooms are not recorded. Uh, so y'all have a wonderful time on today. Mm -hmm. All right. We're back in the room already. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let me dismiss the other room. Um, let's see. All right, let's give everybody a chance to come on back in. I think I might have pushed the wrong button. <laughs> hey. All I right. Think I, I think I pushed for me to come out. Everybody else is still in there today. <laughs> All right, that it'll it'll it says it'll like it automatically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's twenty two seconds, and they'll be back in. So, all right, want to welcome everybody back in. Let me give them just a few minutes to finish up their last words. All right. All right. I think everybody should be back in the room now. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, your time together. I tried to give you guys just a little bit more time this morning uh, because I can tell some time. I can see you guys from the outside. I'm not in there with y'all, but I can see you from the outside. I can see conversations still going on. Uh, so I try to uh, just give just a little bit more opportunity to let everybody finish their thoughts and their conversations. So uh, but I want to um, thank you guys for participating in. I'm finishing up this last thing right here. So uh, I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for participating in the rooms and, um, you know, having a wonderful time. Uh, we're going to let some of the some of the room participants share uh, maybe just a few minutes of your takeaway from the room from Dr. Wade's room and then somebody from Mrs. Fate's room and then we'll move on. Uh, to another segment of what we'll be doing here. If anybody would like to share this morning, you're more than welcome to do so. Good morning, Miss Marilyn. Um, this is Regina. Yeah, we just, everybody just talked about, you know, how the different messages, you know, impact, um, impacted our lives this week and um, we went around the room and, you know, Dr. Wade to ask if anybody had anything, you know, that, you know, needed prayer about, you know, you know, because when you put it out in the atmosphere, you know, um, um, 
God works it out. Um, so we that's mainly what we did. We just, you know, talked about the different things through the week. And then um, he prayed. I'm, I'm like you. He should be a pastor. I just see pastor all over him. Doctor, pastor, however you want to say it, however you want to see it. But, yeah, you know, it was just, um, you know, everybody just, you know, shared things about, you know, what's, what's going on in their life right now. And, and you know, nuggets that they took from the week. Um, and that's pretty much it. Amen. I love that. Yeah. Uh, last night, for those of you that joined in with uh, Singles Let's Talk, uh, that's one of the things that we talked about is while we're in the waiting room in life, on whatever level it is, you learn a lot, a lot of things about yourself. And um, I think as we go through, you know, various pressures in life, they really do introduce us to um, our gifts that we have. And I think I think during the times of coming into Breakfast of Champions, you guys are learn, gonna learn probably confirmation of what God has been speaking all along. And, you know, maybe sometimes we just needed uh, people to uh, come in and reaffirm those things or, you know, to not feel like you would be out there by yourself with that. Or maybe I'm just thinking this or whatever, but I, I do agree with you. Many of y'all, Dr. Wade, you know, all uh, I see these gifts on y'all so much. I really, really do. And uh, my prayer is that hopefully one day, um, you know, I don't think it's that y'all don't see it. I think it's just the receiving it, uh, getting to the point to where you just receive what it is that God has spoken over your life. But I believe these rooms are going to help us to do that. So I definitely agree with that. Uh, anybody else want to share a takeaway from Dr. Wade's room uh, before we move to uh, Mrs. Faith? Anybody else? Good morning. He was just saying that we need to um, be able to uh, encourage others. And like Regina said, prayer, he really did that. I do see pastor all over him as well. Um, he has a calling and I just ask God to help him. And we just, uh, we were just talking about encouraging others and team building and uh, talking about, uh, that's about it in prayer. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Good one. Good one. All right. Let's go to Mrs. Faith's room. Anybody want to share uh, your takeaway from Mrs. Faith's room? Don't don't second. Don't think about it twice. Just whenever it comes to your mind and say, you know what? I think I want to speak up. Uh, let's go ahead and just open up your mic and move forward. Don't stop to say, well, I wonder if anybody else going to say anything. Cause nobody may not say anything. Uh, you know, just, you know, do that. <laughs> yes, I think the breakout room was really good. Um, I had the opportunity to share something that I was um, I'm dealing with. I think it's a good thing. It's coming out of a bad thing. And now just looking for the next step in the process of building relationship with my granddaughter. So um, we we spoke about that a bit. It was good. Um, the breakout room is a place to break out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we definitely had some break some breakout in there and I, I don't think I have the liberty to really share all that was talked about that one of the things is remembering who we are and that we have an enemy there is an adversary that wants to kill steal and destroy our lives and we have to remember who we are and not to allow um, our frustrations and our afflictions because we're going to have many of them so many yeah. are the afflictions of the righteous and just learning our lessons in the affliction because God doesn't allow things to happen for no reason. Everything that happens, God is pulling something out of that and usually is pulling something out of us. So that's kind of what we were speaking about in the room, a part of what we were speaking about. Amen. I love that. Not and letting yeah. anger overtake us. Yeah. Yeah. Go I ahead. love that. Go ahead. I'm sorry to I was just saying, not letting anger overtake us and cause us to do something that we'll be sorry for later. Good deal. I love it. I love it. Anyone else from Faith's Room want to give you guys an ample time to do that? Anyone else? Okay. 
All right. Well, uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the uh, rooms there. And um, I think it's a blessing to be able to come into early morning settings like this and have conversation with one another, get to know the people that are laboring among you. And uh, so that we not, you know, um, you know, you know how it is sometimes we feel, well, their gift is stronger than mine, or uh, we have this thing called comparisons. No, no two gifts are alike. Everybody is unique and individual on their own. And uh, these rooms get a, give us an opportunity to see even the strongest that it, we look like we're strong on the outside. They're struggling through things just like all of us. It's just that we have accepted the calling that's upon our life to either go forward and be a leader or, you know, take that leap of faith and do something different so that we can uh, better the lives of others, you know, while we're also um, you know, using those same tools to help ourselves. That's what the teacher does. Any, If you got a gift of teaching, teach your way out of it. If your gift is um, um, song, sing your way out of it. Whatever gift, your gift makes room for you and it brings you before great men as well. But you want to be able to partake of it you know, first and let us know that, hey, it's a joy. I get a joy out of serving in this gift that I have. You talking about the gift of song. If I had the gift of song, y'all, I'd be singing everywhere. <laughs> everywhere I go, I would, you know, because I know it opens up doors for me. Well, well, this morning we are going to do something just a little bit different. I am so in the spirit of giving uh, right now, and I want our room to be a room that you know you 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 realize that things need to be in circulation in your life. That's what you're doing when you're coming into Breakfast of Champions. We show up when we go into chatting with champions. We show up and we open up, and we begin to start getting things into circulation. And one of the things that I want to teach you guys is about giving, giving to others. Uh, there's so many people in this room uh, that I have seen y'all standing out on so many different levels. And uh, we want to show some appreciation to you guys and, um, you know, let you know that we, you know, you're you're not overlooked by any means. And we want you to keep con uh, continue to keep growing. So we got a couple of things. Mrs. Ladripa is going to come forward. We're doing our stay in place uh, early and she's going to come forward and then I'm going to come back and present some special gifts uh, to a couple of people and uh, we'll let you guys uh, enjoy those. Miss Ladriva. Good morning everyone. So we have a couple of gifts we want to give out uh, um, this morning. Here's the ladies that won uh, the gifts. So we have Miss Kathy Mitchell, Latoya Hanson, Regina Oliver, and for Alicia Johnson. So see Miss Marilyn for your gifts. Thank you, ladies, and keep up the great work. Amen. Also, Miss Marilyn's going to, uh, I'm giving it back to Miss Marilyn. Uh, she has uh, some things she wants to, uh, two bonus books will be given away. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, we have a couple of gifts that we definitely want to give you guys. Uh, Y'all hear me talking a lot about uh, commanding your morning in the morning. You may be wondering, where did Miss Marilyn get that from? You know, but it really does work. When you get up in the morning, morning time, the Bible says you ought to, uh, that's what David said. David said early in the morning, did he get up and he sought the Lord while the Lord may be found. And there is a young lady, uh, she's actually a pastor that really, really blessed my heart uh, with um, th just that phrase that she had you know, getting up and commanding your morning. And that is Dr. Cindy Trim. So many of you are going to be getting this book here by uh, Dr. Cindy Trim. It's called Commanding Your Morning. And I want you to go in and really, really use this book as your daily devotional because it really does unleash uh, God's power in your life each and every day. It helps you to get past hurdles. It helps you to open up your mouth and begin to start moving forward with the things of life. Uh, the next thing that we want to give away, we have a couple of people that I do believe uh, has been, um, I mean, extremely outstanding. Um, one of them, uh, Miss Faith, I want you to introduce the one that you uh, actually mentioned uh, so that you can share the words that you have for them. I don't want to put words into anybody's mouth or anything. Well, first of all, good morning to good all morning. the champions in the room. Um, I, I think that um, when um, Marilyn brought it to us, to um, we wanted to give back to those who have, um, you know, just stepped up in leadership, right? 
and have done some things. And she said, well, have you, or do you have someone in, in the room that um, you feel that has done that? And I um, prayed about it and uh, who came to my heart was Pastor Denise. And I really appreciate you, um, Pastor Denise, because first of all, you're a woman of God and you have so much wisdom that you bring into the room and the table. Whomever um, you interact with, you always have something um, of value to share. And then also, because when I was ill, you you came right in the room and you, I mean, you were asked and, and you accepted because you have to accept the call or accept the assignment or whatever you accepted it. And you did such an awesome job <clears throat> and you were able to, um, you know, share and, and give um, a lot of um good wisdom I think that was the wisdom room that that morning that everybody uh, felt valued and and really got something that um they were able to take with them so I appreciate you of what you do and how you show up and and how you share and I, I just wanted um to do that you know because it was in my heart and that's it <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, Faith. Uh, we have the book by Cindy Trams, Unstoppable, uh, that we're going to be giving to uh, uh, Dr. Walker. I mean, uh, oh Lord, I'm already calling her that, Pastor Walker, uh, because I do believe she is definitely unstoppable. And whatever that next level that needs to be opened up in her life, I pray that uh, through this reading and through this study that you will be able to, you know, allow the Lord to take you there, to flap your wings. Don't worry about what everybody else is thinking or whatever, but just know that you are unstoppable there. Uh, the last person that we want to share uh, a gift with is someone that um, I actually uh, feel like has really, really stood out on so many different levels. And I think you guys will agree with me here on this one here. And I was praying about, you know, I didn't want to give everybody the same thing. And I thought about what would really be something great for this person here. And uh, that person is Mrs. Ladriba Colston. Ladriba has been a motivator. She has just jumped in, y'all, and said, you know what? I want to jump in and I want to help out on multiple levels. And uh, and I want you to know that it is so appreciated what it is that you do. And I don't know if you have actually heard of this book before, Ladriba, but there's a book by Terry Lance called God's Armor Bearer. I do believe that you have definitely been called to be an armor bearer, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in the marketplace. And what an armor bearer is just the life of Jonathan and Saul. It talks about that a lot, about how uh, Jonathan undergirded, uh, I mean, uh, yes, uh, um, uh, David, Jonathan and David, how Jonathan undergirded David on so many different levels. And what this book does, it teaches you about temperance. It teaches you about um, uh, being able to watch your leader, uh, finding out what your leader needs, uh, being able to um, uh, serve, you know, on a capacity as God places it in your heart, you know, different things like that. And I think this book, God's Armor Bearer, will really, really help you to grow on so many different levels. And uh, it, it blessed my life. I think the first time I read it, it blessed my life so much that um, I don't know, I don't think I've ever been the same again because I know that I am a servant. I mean, a true servant to God. You know, anytime that you can serve up under leaders for a long period of time and not not try to take their shine or not try to do anything that, and then at the appropriate time, you know, when God gives you the okay to, you know, move forward, you know, you're able to walk with the wisdom that you have learned from others. So I want to present that book to you, uh, Ladriba, uh, so that it can really be a great part of the library that you have. Then also, you know, maybe pass it on to those that are in the workplace with you. So congratulations to all of our winners on today, all of our hosts, you know, Mrs. Uh, Denise Walker, and Mrs. Ladriba Coaston, uh, congratulations to each one of you guys. I'm going to let y'all open up the mic. And if y'all just want to do a, a great big old congratulations to everybody, that would be wonderful at this time. And then I'll move forward.
if anybody wants to open up their mic. And just well, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. congratulations. Congratulations, ladies. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations everyone. Congratulations. Amen. 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 Barely, yes. I just want to say something else, too. I, I also want to congratulate all of our, our hosts in the morning, our facilitators yes. that come in at 545 and show their face in the place. Yes. <laughs> they, yes. They've done such an excellent job. And uh, I just wanted to say congratulations to them as well and just being accountable and, and being here, you know, showing up. It's just about showing up and and you bring so much value to the room, you know, mm -hmm. totally. So you are our hands and feet and, and hearts that help us do what we do. So thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And uh, I, yeah, it's a, it's an honor to be able to give to others, you know, to, you know, a lot of times I'm thinking throughout the day, God, they bless our hearts so much. God, what can we do for them? You know, and I think learning is essential uh, to growth. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, for a few minutes this morning. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't always feel like a leader. Sometimes you don't always feel like, you know, you're you're winning on so many different levels. But I want you guys to know that you really are. I want you to not be so hard on yourself, you know, just because you can't see uh, what's going on outside. I want you to just not be hard on yourself. I think Shirley said something to us last night in Black Love for Singles that sometimes you 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 can't you can't see what's taking place behind the scenes. You know, she started off with, you know, how just thanking God uh, for the season that we are in. And sometimes you, you just can't see what God is doing, you know, behind the doors or whatever the case may be, but, but know that he is working and it will show in the days to come. That's that phrase you'll win if you don't quit. Don't always look for tangible evidence because everything in this world is subject to change. Nothing stays the same. So, you know, we want to make sure to, you know, keep our eyes focused on those particular areas there. Well, we're going to do a quick recap, uh, uh, not a recap, but we're going to do a quick, quick uh, uh, conversation this morning on um, 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 uh, learning uh, through failure. And I hope that this will really, really bless you. Like we may not be able to get through it all, but I want to be able to share just a few things here. Um, I always love this picture of this young girl here because she's, this is me. When I was a kid, I mean, to the T, my imagination was out of this world. You could put me outside and you know, I would watch my mom cooking a lot. She, she was an excellent, excellent baker. And she always was cooking cakes and any kind of pie. I think she got it from her mom. Just they, they all were fantastic cooks. And uh, while my mom was cooking, she would, you know how they get rid of them old rusty pans. And my mom would throw it up. I don't know why she throw it outside like she did, but she would put that pan outside. And my sister and I would get them pans and y'all rained. That was a May day for us because we got out there. We got that mud. We put it in them pans. We baked our cake. We had enough nerve. We had enough sense to know that we need to put it on the hanger, on the, on the hedge for a while, let it dry out so that when we get ready to cut it, you know, like we need to and serve or whatever, cause, you know, it just teaches so much about yourself. And uh, I just started taking Taking all kinds of things. It, it doesn't take a lot to make me happy at all. You can give me raw, raw ingredients with something. And because I have learned how to make something out of nothing, um, I live in this world of, of, of creativity and all those kinds of things. It does not mean that I get it right every time, but as long as I keep this image in my mind, you know, growing your wings while you learn, you're not going to win everything but you sure can learn from it all. So last week we talked about, uh, you have the power of choice. You really do. You, you can either sit there in the midst of what it is you're going through and, you know, and say that, well, ain't nothing never going to, you know, happen in my life or, you know, different things like that. Or you can get up and decide, you know, that, you know, life is going to be better this morning. I don't care what went on yesterday. I don't care how things got flipped upside down. Lights went off, internet, whatever the case may be. If you just relax in the moment, you know, and realize, all right, 
long as seed time and harvest remain, the earth is going to yield or increase. God is going to give us a chance to do it again. Just don't sit in the middle of it. Don't sit in the middle of an argument. Don't sit in the middle of, you know, uh, something, a deadline that you did not meet. Just pick yourself back up. Use the power of choice. All right, we got three, four other things. Maybe if I'm kind of behind on something, maybe I need to call on someone for some help so that I can stay on schedule the way that I need to. We have to choose to learn from things. You have to make it a choice to learn each and every day. Not some days, but every day. Choose to learn, you know, from whatever that thing is that, that's heavy on your heart right now. And, you know, maybe you and your loved one had an argument or, you know, they kind of, you know, y'all went through some things and maybe you don't like the decision that somebody's making or whatever. It's okay to go ahead and voice your grievance about it or your concern about it. But at the same time, make it a point to learn from it. Don't don't stupor in it. Be falling out about it, but make it a choice to learn. Make it a decision to learn. We learn more from our failures than from our successes. We really do. Because most of the time we sit in failure longer that we sit in successes because we ponder upon it, how it make us feel, all those kinds of things. And not only do I find, we find out what doesn't work so that we can adjust our, 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 our future attempts. We learn about ourselves in the process and gain a bit of empathy towards others that might be struggling as well. I can say this has been a great one for me. Um, I always, I don't know why I do that uh, when I find myself in an area to where uh, maybe, um, uh, ooh, that was a hard lesson to learn. I immediately start thinking about other people that may be in that spot. And then it also takes me back to a place of compassion for other people, you know, when they're going through different things. I have some empathy for them. I can feel um, uh, for you. And, and what it does, it helps me to uh, gain insight on ways to better help you. I was listening to uh, Regina and Toya this morning as they were talking about the grocery thing. Uh, you know, somebody's, you got all these groceries and then you got somebody behind you that just has one, uh, you know, you, you, and I don't know if we learned that because I was the one that was behind a bunch of folks with a bunch of groceries and you're wondering why didn't they just let me go forward? And then you just said it within yourself. If that were ever me, you know what? I would always let somebody go in front of me because it doesn't take a whole lot to make other people happy. And it sounds like maybe they did make somebody's day, you know, by that, just having some empathy, sitting there holding up, holding two or three things in your hand while somebody's got 50 items, you know, and think about it, Walmart, Kroger's, um, all the other grocery stores, I think they learned from that as well, because that's where they 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 uh, created the checkout, those other checkout stations, you can do self checkout now, you know, uh, we, we it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to have people waiting in line with one or two objects when you got a buggy full of people, a people with a buggy full of things. So why not keep our customers happy? Customer service is always at the front of our, our frontal lobe uh, to think about how we can make things better. That's why people don't mind going to Walmart or going, going to these self-checkout counters because I don't have to wait for a long time. As a matter of fact, even when I go to, I probably don't even go to many places where I have to get out and go inside. I love it when they have drive throughs That's where drive throughs came from. We learned from failures. All those long lines in the stores, in the, you know, um, uh, fast food restaurants or whatever, you know, they started the, the checkout. And then who went the extra mile to learn from it? At Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is on top of the game. You know, maybe people had complaints about, you know, they got these long lines taking a long time. So Chick-fil-A, they got little waiters out there all out in the, in the, um, in the drive, drive throughs where they're taking your orders in advance. So all you got to do is get up to the line, get your item, get up to your line and get your item. They're moving in this space of innovation uh, so that we can uh, process through things a lot quicker. So we do learn from failures. And as a matter of fact, all of the top notch technology techniques that are out there, they learn from failures. They just made it, um, made it work for them. Uh, there's growing research and science around what it means to fail. Uh, in fact, failure has been proven a prereq prerequisite for success. It really has. And here's the catch. Failure only works to your advantage if you learn from it. 
they're failing just for the sake of failing and you know well you know and then don't even take don't don't even take uh note that you have repeated this cycle over and over again and sometimes the only re reason we're repeating it over and over again is that we we're needing to learn a better curve from it a way to go about doing it because people fail they i mean they, they learn from things every day but the key is to learn from your failure okay so this happened you know we didn't we didn't have that conversation um go the way that i thought that thought it should have gone so I, i'm gonna make it a point to i, I want to learn from your perspective and one of the things that i have um um been doing i've been divorced now what seven years it's been seven eight years now uh seven eight years i'm yeah it's been about it's been a little minute and uh what i do constantly is remind myself that I, I do want to move forward into a marriage again, but I want to learn from the things that, you know, were there before. So a lot of times I watch podcasts and I don't take in everything everybody says, but I, I do learn from it. Uh, I learned, we learned the other day, um, for those of you that got a chance to watch the, uh, the, um, uh, the clip that I sent to you guys, um, I think it was on Hardly Initiated. They had Cindy Trims on there. And one of the things that, sh that they talked about was that alpha. Um, uh, she says she's an alpha woman, but she doesn't have an alpha behavior, you know, like when it comes to marriage or things like that, because they were asking her, does her spouse have problems, you know, with her being, you know, a leader and different things like that. She said, no, because I bring feminine energy. I thought that was a great touch in there. You know, uh, she's an alpha woman but she brings feminine energy to the table. So just learning from uh, different things like that, because sometimes we will dummy ourselves down um, so that we can, you know, feel like, well, this is what it's going to take, you know, to, you know, get a person or whatever. I'm going to have to silence myself. No, you just need to keep that feminine energy. I think that men and women do love to see the strong nature in a person or uh, the gift that you have with inside of you are, or whatever you may call it. Uh, the only thing is you, we just have to learn how to uh, know who we are as individuals and stay in those particular lanes. Because listen, I hear uh, y'all, we were interviewing uh, Joe last night. If y'all didn't get a chance to see it, I'll, I'll drop the replay shortly. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed about uh, Joe and Marcus, uh, they really all three of them, Joe, Marcus and uh, Harlan, they have a very sensitive sound uh, to them. And some people may call it more of a, uh, a feminine sound. And I don't think it's a feminine sound. I think it's a love for your mother. I think you have a strong love for your mother and you you learn things in, in different ways. Um, it, it's different, the energy that comes out of it. It helps you to learn a lot about people. You wonder why they are so powerful around women. It's because they have a different love for it. they probably have learned from some things and kind of went back and realized what mom had said and, you know, uh, uh, different areas like that. So uh, the next thing, and I want to open up the line so much that so much to have y'all talk, but we won't, I'm going to open it up in a minute because it's so much that I want to talk about this morning. So why is it important for us to learn from failures? Why is it important? One, you have to remember that you are a human being. That means we enter the world with a lot of opportunities for growth and personal develop, development. And together we're on this collective journey to better ourselves and the world around us. Didn't Jesus say, what are the, the greatest commands? He said, to love the Lord thy God with all their mind, their heart, thy soul. And then he said, but I give you a greater command that you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. We're on a collective journey learning from faith. Sometimes we learn from selfishness. You know, we want it our way. You know, we won't yield the right away to let nobody else say nothing. We we learn from that. And sometimes the slapping on the wrist with it, you know, it, it kind of stings for a minute. It's just because we're getting selfishness out. Those things should have been learned as a child. And it hurts when you have to learn something as an adult. But wherever you learn it at, you have to learn that we live in a collective world. That's why it's good when you have siblings, you you have to learn how to share, you know, you have to learn how to um, give other people the right of way. Um, you know, it's not always about us all the time. 
And, you know, when you start realizing we're on a collective journey together, it's a it's a great learning curve that we have. It does not um, diminish anything about you. It does not mean for you to take anything personal. It's just for us to be reminded that we are on a collective journey, not just for ourselves, but for others too. Maybe we're just a little too rigid about some things, or maybe we're just a little bit too loose about something. It takes all of these measures, you know, coming together and then realizing to release the right amount at the right time, because you never want to, um, you know, kill out anyone or take away their personality or anything like that. But we have to learn how to work together as a unit. But in order to do so, sometimes we have to fail. You know, sometimes we have to see ourselves through the mirror. And nine times out of 10, it's not the first time you've heard it. It's just, it's the first time that the light came out. And it normally comes on when you're in a place where you feel, you know what, this is an important place for me. And I, I you know, this one is worth learning. I think it's worth learning from. And sometimes we do have to find something, you know, worth keeping that we put more of our efforts into, you know? And uh, but we do learn from those things. Is it important to learn from failures because it 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 brings us to brings us one step closer to reaching our success? It really does. You know, um, it, it doesn't feel good uh, to in the enemy. He loved playing on stuff like see that I told you you wasn't all of that, <laughs> or you know. Or and I've been trying to tell you, some people use opportunities like that to try to put you down or whatever. No, I let them know. No, that's just a stepping stone. I'm going to learn from it because some people can go through things and uh, they repeat it over and over again and they never learn a thing from it. Uh, I'm going to go to the next one and then I've got to stop and let y'all chat. Uh, what do we learn uh, from failures? We learn one, that failure hurts, doesn't make us feel good. And it can put our, our perfectionism to the test. Sometimes we just a little too, you know, you got that 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 perfectionist thing going on inside of you. You know, you don't want to look bad or you don't want people to look at you in different ways or whatever. And it can be difficult to pick ourselves up and try again, especially if we felt like, well, I'm smarter than them or I got this together. Let me tell you something. If you the sharpest knife in the drawer of where you go, that group you in ain't too strong. You should not be the sharpest knife everywhere you go. That that toots your horn too much. You should put you you should you should attempt to put yourself in ponds where there is greatness all around you. You know that's one of the reasons that I've um, made the choice to add different people into the rooms. Uh, because I want I want us to know uh, that there are many great sounds out there, you know, and it keeps us from, uh, you know, how sometimes we can uh, idolize people or different things like that. It keeps you from idolizing in any kind of way because you start realizing it's some other folks out there that can do this same thing. And I want you guys to know. And, and then sometimes when you start taking on too much you know, uh, as if you're the only one that can do it, it wears you out. You got to learn how to share it sometimes. You got to learn how to delegate it sometimes because what happens when you can't be there? And then that perfectionism starts, uh, starts trying to come in. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, you got to learn how to uh, bring people in to your life, you know, that are just as strong as you are, but they have their strengths in other areas. We don't come in to compete with each other at all. So these are the things that we learned and we're gonna come back and um, um, kind of recap back on these next week. There are five things that you can learn. One, resilience. Two, humility. Three, flexibility. Four, innovation and creativity. And five, motivation. We learn from those things. Resilience, from, from failure, we learn resilience. It's hard to not learn how to build resilience after a failure, especially if you're determined to overcome. So you got to determine yourself to be an overcomer. You know, we were we were talking to uh, uh, Joe last night and, you know, I asked him, what did he cry a lot when he was a kid? And uh, Joe said, no, it was something he knew inside of him. He was talking about how, how back in, you know, the day when segregation was there or whatever, or they were just maybe um, crossing over from segregation and 
they were talking about this white teacher that he had and said she was really hard on everybody. And Joe said he put himself at the front of the room, you know, because he felt like that's who he is. You know, you overcome that. You don't let people just put labels on you. Uh, I remember back in um, when I was working with um, Head Start and one of my pet peeves was when I heard those um, um, they were like they were assessors that came in uh, to assess the four year olds in Head Start. And they start putting labels on these kids. I think that's where my first pet peeve started at in, in education. They put that label on those kids. They're four. They, they haven't seen much of life. They put labels in their files and different things like that. And I'm like, no, that, that's not true. And I think that's where I set on my quest. Marilyn, you, you got you, you to gotta come in and you know do some things. That's where my passion started coming from. That's not true. We're going to overcome that. So I started working a lot with the Black community because these are the folks they were putting the labels on. That's not true about us. It's just sometimes that other people have had more opportunity that we have put us in an put us in an, in a in a place where we have opportunity and see what we learn. Matter of fact, put me in the room with my other counterparts and see what I learn because that's what happened to us. We lived in a very poor uh, environment, but we went to the richest school. You can't tell me that I can't do the same thing that somebody else does. These children may not be able to see this right now because the parents are living in some impoverished areas. They're going to impoverished schools. That's why a lot of time you're seeing a lot of what you're seeing. Put them in another environment and tell me they won't learn from it. Overcoming that, that's a no. Resilience from that. Um, resilience is important to uh, life skills also. You know, I remember, I remember my, my baby son, that, that little boy, I saw him getting in trouble when he was young. And y'all, I switched over real quick. One of the things that I told him, I said, baby, I'm going to have to teach you some life skills. I said, because you're taking hard way around life. And y'all, I knew then I had either that or I had to put him in another environment. And there's only one thing that I beat myself up about. Y'all, I had become a believer at this particular time. And I heard the Lord say to put him over at all saints. You got him in the wrong pond with people. You're thinking outside the box because of where you came from. You may need to put them in a different pond so that they can also learn as well. That's the only thing that I regret with that. Cause he's, when I tell you that boy is super smart, but if you put them around people that, that don't care about their education, they normally start dummying down to whatever that is. It helps to build life skills, you know? Uh, and when you start building, you learn resilience and it helps you and others learn ways out. And most of the time, those are the people that will go back and help other people because we remembered when people put labels on us and told us what we were not going to be and all those kinds of things. So it's a bounce back kind of thing. You know, I ain't trying to prove nothing to nobody, but I am coming to say that I overcame some of the labels that were put on me. And I know that you can too. Last thing on this one with resilience, it can help you to build a growth mindset. It can help you adopt the right behaviors to overcome change. And it can help you to build grit, tenacity, and motivation. That's what resilience would do. Okay, you telling me I can't have this, I can't go here. No, ain't nothing in me um, uh, agreeing with what you're saying. Absolutely nothing. That's why these early things in life, they say by the time a child uh, um, gets to either six, it's either six or 10, uh, the, 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 the essence of them has been developed, you know, inside. And either they have adopted the attitude of a failure or a winner, you know. And if you got a, a, a you know, I can do attitude, you come out of any box no matter where they try to put you and you don't even have to fight people and tell people, you know, that you're going to win. All you got to do is show the proof, proof in the pudding. I always win. That's why it's, it's ve I'm very bold when I quote the scripture and it says that uh, we always thanks, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. It's not arrogance. It's just speaking the word of God. I, that scripture there, let me tell you that resonated in my heart. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Anytime the enemy tries to come in and bring something, that little resilient girl, that girl that was out there baking, you know, fake cakes out there outside in the mud, using mud and going through the jungle and, you know, eating persimmons and all these kind of things. You can't tell me that I'm not going to win. 
You know, my mother may not have had a lot of money to, you know, to create a lot of meals, but we had resilience in that house because you had to learn how to make it. Do you hear me? Resilience, that's what it'll teach you to do. And then listen, coming into rooms like this, it helps you to see that you can make it as well because as soon as you see other people doing it, you'll realize that you can do it as well. Y'all, I could go on and on and on and on and on with that and we will finish it up next week. But that resilience is so important when it comes down to building, you know, the building blocks in your life and learning from your failures or what, it depends on what you call it, you know, I listen, I see the abundance of rain. Ain't no rain falling out there yet. It's because I got it in my spirit. My spirit was cultivated as a child to be a winner. I didn't learn how to be a winner when I became an adult. It was cultivated as a child that I'm going to always win. How do I know? Listen, at, when we used to leave the house, you know how now people worry about you can't let your child go outside and, you know, do these, all, all these kind of things. Listen, we would go outside, stay outside for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And we always made it back home. We knew to make it back home before that light came on outside, but we always made it back home. It built up some confidence in my life. I don't need nobody always having to watch over me. I know when the light comes on, I need to be here. You know, I learned that, you know, listen, as, I, as we were just going up and down the streets, we were learning from failures. We learned where not to go. We had a graveyard over there. And if you're scary, don't go down the street where the graveyard is at or whatever, you know. And then I also learned that, you know, just because we were living one kind of way, all I had to do was keep walking down the street and I saw a total different environment. I saw black folks living well. And I think when the biggest light came on is when I moved to Houston, Texas. I think that when I tell you we went from rags to riches overnight, we literally did. We moved from impoverished, an impoverished area to uh, a neighborhood. This neighborhood was just built when my sister and her husband, uh, you know, uh, got their home there. Y'all, we were sitting in the lap of luxury, you know, and you. it took a minute minute for my mind to adjust, but I'm 10. I can, I'm flexible. It took a minute for my mind to adjust, to, but it didn't take long. And really all it took was me coming back home and seeing people living just a little bit different. And I start realizing, girl, you really did go from rag to riches overnight. Now my thing is to come back because I was so adamant about coming back to Tyler. I just couldn't leave it alone. I felt like that's, that's where I want... I wanted to go back and show these people it's a better life out there. You know, the only reason that you keep sitting in and, 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 and you know, doing the things you're doing because this is all you see. It's important to get exposed. You just need to get out and travel like Faith was talking about this week. Get out and travel a little bit. See different things out there. Go out there and, and listen. If you ain't never seen no good relationships, you ain't seen nothing. It's a, it's a whole world out there that's got great relationships going on. You don't want to just call things as you see it right now. You call it as it shall be. What do you want it to be? That's what resilience does. I speak myself about this box. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay in a place called broke. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to come back within. I'm going to have to learn from the fair. All right. What are the tools that you have? What are the gifts that God has given to you? I need you to stir it up. I need you to stir up that gift that's inside of you, that gift, that gift to encourage others, that gift to motivate others. If you got the gift of song, listen, you ought to sing your way up out of that thing there. If you got the gift of giving, you ought to give your way up out of that. That's what he gave it to you for. It was a gift. Prayer, I want you to learn how to pray your way through that. There's a conference that's going on in, uh, in, in Chicago in June and everything in me said to invite Kathy Mitchell to go with me, to go with me to uh, go to John Hanna's church. You know, you need to see this thing activated. Anything can happen when you get in the environment where growth is taking place. Anything can happen. And see the word, we can speak a whole lot of words, but set somebody in the environment. Change happens happens to them. That's one reason we go to the resorts. I mean, we go to the retreats so that you can get the exposure that you need. Baby, you better get out here and dream about living the life you want to live. Even if it's somebody else's right now, go rent the place for a little while. You know, let your mind explore because those are the things that I have actually, I don't teach y'all anything that I have not done myself. I know God is a healer. I know he's a way maker. I know I can trust him. He's been faithful all along. Ain't no sense of me stopping there. Ain't no sense of me trying to go over there and, you know, try to start holding on to something else. No, no. The winds will blow. 
all these other things, but it's something about the word of God that will stand. You got to get planted where you need to be, you know, so that you can, you know, flourish in those areas. He said, he that is planted in the house of God shall flourish in the, in the gates. You know, you got to get your feet planted somewhere, you know, whatever it is that you're needing, get your feet planted in that area. Stop moving around, develop a teachable spirit, have the resilience that you need. One of the words we're going to learn next week is humility. You got to develop a heart of humility, you know, so that you can learn. It, melt, it helps you to melt your heart to learn. You don't know everything. You know some things, and uh, but you don't know everything. And then people don't care about what you know until they know that you care, you know? So we have to adjust those things around. I'm going to stop for a moment because y'all can see I can go. Y'all, listen, listen, I've been had a break all week, so I'm all fired up today. But I want to open up the mics for anybody that would like to share for a moment what you may have gained in the what, 15, 20 minutes or so, and what you're taking with you on today. And then we're going to get ready to sew our way out of here because I want that to be a great part of your, your experience as well. Anybody this morning that wants to share. Miss Marilyn, this morning yes, um, at the beginning of the message, not to take away the end, but the beginning, I started to think about that customer service and you were speaking about Chick-fil-A. And then my mm. mind started going back, hmm, we were in the pandemic, during the pandemic, and Chick-fil-A had lines backed up all around the corner and everywhere else. So they had to, you know, revise their process. I'm a process person. Mm -hmm. so I said, now, how did they pro still provide that customer service even during a season of uncertainty? Yeah. Because we didn't know what was going on with, with the pandemic. So what they did, they didn't know they were going to fail. So what they did, they started bringing people out to the people in line in order to take your order to be, right. to be, you know, keep that same customer service, keep that same efficiency. And they made that change and they've adopted it and they're still doing it now out of pandemic. They that's have right. that touch. And that's why people are so valuable, you know, even in customer service, you're still saying the things that need to be said and, that's you know, right. and providing that good food that we all love. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yeah, they definitely are an example to many, many uh, restaurants to providing customer service. And then check this out. They do not open their doors on Sunday. That means they have not bowed down to the pressures of everybody else. Well, you're going to have to keep your doors open so you make your money. No, they provide customer service, you know, at top notch. So we get a chance to choose the days we're going to be out. Um, uh, something else with that, that Faith is talking about, talking about that customer service. I was listening to D Deval Franklin. I think that's what his name is. He was at Social Dallas this Sunday uh, in Dallas. And one of the things that he talked about was balancing between the industry you know, being a man of God and then also uh, being a producer, you know, a movie producer and all that. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Mr. Franklin did was uh, he told them that he does not work on Sundays. Whatever you do, I do not work on Sundays because this is where, you know, I give my time to God. Uh, that that's a place where you would definitely have to be resilient and resilient in that industry, not to let them drag you all around, you know, but to provide, you're going to provide a great service like Faith was talking about so much to the point that even in a pandemic, even when everybody else is out of work, I'm going to always be at work because what I put God first in everything that I do. And I think that is something for us to definitely take away. He said, Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything that you need in life will be added unto you. Stick to the ways that God goes about doing things. God will make your way prosperous in the end. So great one, Faith. Uh, anybody else this morning? Anybody else? It is the culture and, and not adapting to it. Amen. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Good morning. Good morning, Ajayba. With that, thank you, Ms. Merlin, and everyone for the encouragement, the book. I will use it to my uh, advantage. I like to read. Mm -hmm. I just want to say this. Um, I just remember reading about David, how he encouraged himself. And I remember just reading mm -hmm. saying that he was he was faithful to God's promises and God trusted him on little things and he got greater responsibility. So that's what that's what I want to do. I want this guy to trust me with the little things so I can be, give his glory to make it bigger. And I want to motivate everybody on this team, like I motivate my team, 
So thank you guys. I love y'all and have a good day. Amen. Thank you so much, LaDreva. Uh, yeah, learning where your gifted areas are, customer service. Man, when I tell you that's a that's a commodity, it really is. Cause it's so hard to find people that are nice and kind, you know. But you want to improve your 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 service level at every capacity. And guess what we learn it from from failures. We learn it from failure how to serve people better. But you have to make sure to put the people at the forefront. The customer is always right. Remember that because they don't have to come to your service. Sometimes when well, you all go somewhere else, okay, they will if you keep acting throwing out that type of, you know, behavior, but learning even when you could listen, a manager, I want to speak to some of the managers out there from manager to your, your workers. Um, you know, how important is it for you to learn from them? How often do you set aside time to learn from your workers, even though you are the manager? Anybody want to kind of share in that one before we dismiss this morning? How important is it for you to learn? And what thing, what have you learned from them? Ah, it's taking too long for us to open up our mics on that one. So we don't learn anything. Okay, Faith. Yes, ma'am. Um, I you know, that's one thing that I I love about God putting it in my heart to be able to be so open that they are open to teach me. Yeah, you know, through it all. And um, when you're going through change and you have a new organization and and I went through a season where short season where I had to pick up two different roles or two different big functions, budget and training. And I really haven't moved in it to be a manager to manage that to that capacity. Mm -hmm. So they taught me the functions. They taught me how to put that six and seven million dollar budget together. They taught me how to, you know, how to help to train or better uh, train others with their different technical, all these technical disciplines and what have you. I allowed them to do that. And I told them up front, I said, I am wanting you to teach me because I am not strong in these areas so sometimes we right. have to be transparent and let them know where where our needs are and where we need to develop and in turn it's just a sharing and exchange it's giving and, and, and exchanging it's back and forth it's that balance but it's just going back and forth horizontally amen amen faith i think that's what every time i hear you i'm thinking all those years that she's been in that process improvement um you know uh role uh, whether it be HR or just serving as a manager or whatever, um, you 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 position yourself to better the environment with the people that you work with. And I hear the patience within you. And I said she's cultivated that uh, from being on the job with the people that she worked with. And, you know, it's good to sit back. And even if you got to struggle through it or, you know, you know how it is sometimes we go through those phases where, uh, sometimes the people that you trained got promoted over you. Sometimes you got to go through those bumps. But I will say to you, anytime uh, somebody gets a promotion over you, it just wasn't for you. It doesn't have anything to do with you as a person. It just wasn't for you, you know. So you have to wait for the 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 perfect will of God. I think Romans twelve and one, uh, he says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God." that you would present your bodies as a living sacrifice. He said, holy and acceptable unto God. He said, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is the good, the acceptable and the perfect will of God for your life. I don't miss opportunities. Um, something that's not for me is just not for me. I don't beat myself up and behind who got a position over me or whatever. You didn't get my position because no man takes my life. I lay it down. You know, uh, they offer something to me. I can decide whether to take it or not, you know, and if I don't, you know, I miss that particular season. I don't look, I don't look at it as missing a season or whatever. It wasn't my season. There were some other things that were important in my life and God knew it better than I did. So, you know, just learning from those things. Yes, timing and season is key with God's perfect will for our lives. Amen. We'll take one more. Anybody else itching out there that wants to share? 
been a great week, guys. Anybody? Learning. I, I want to ask this final question here, and it can go out to anyone. Um, coming into a room like this, um, many of you serve in positions of leadership yourself. Um, sometimes it can be uncomfortable uh, coming in, hearing from other people, uh, because we have a process that we already work with that works for us. And it can be hard to come in and hear from other people. Uh, you know, uh, it can be hard to hear from other people because only because we have been in that position for so long. Um, how often do you find it um, uh, difficult uh, to relax in a new environment? Just to sit back and relax and 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 find your space, or do we just automatically? You think, well, I got to keep serving in the same capacity that I've always served and I'm a leader. You know, I got to jump in as a leader. Or how many times do you step back and say, well, no, this may be the season to become the student in the room and not so much the leader in the room. Ms. Denise, yes, ma'am. I see your mic. That is an awesome question because once before I had got into a prayer group and I felt that I just needed to be quiet and just see how everything was going and flowing. And they actually kicked me out <laughs> because they said, you need to jump in and you need to be praying and you need to do this. I said, well, that's not what God is telling me. He's telling me to be still, to listen, to receive, because if we can't receive, we can't grow. You, If you're not teachable, you're not reachable. And that's my motto. I don't care how old you are. You can be older and you can have young people teach. I heard you speaking about your granddaughter and she left her word with you guys. It's, am I willing to learn from whoever God placed before me? It doesn't matter if I'm a senior or they're only 11. It, what matters is God will use whoever he chooses to reach you. Sometimes he use somebody you don't even like. Well, it ain't about the messenger. It's about the message. So mm. uh, it, it's a good place to be able, I can be quiet and listen and receive and, and gain knowledge and get some healing. Now, it, it's a good place to be when you can be still and listen. You don't have to always have something to say. Man, that's great. That's great. And it, it's sometimes the, the 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 hesitation from, you know, I need to get this out. I need to get that out. I need to get that out. Hey, Amen. Thank you, uh, Miss Gates. Uh, to get this out and get that out. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, I got to develop some temperance in my life. I think that's what the scripture said, add to your faith, some temperance, you know, some knowledge, some wisdom. So in the room, that's what we come in to do is to add to our faith. We learn from one another. Iron comes in to show up in iron. And I'm so grateful for each one of y'all being here with us because we are learning from one another. Y'all are teaching me you know, uh, what it, what teamwork is all about, um, what, what power comes behind uh, sharing the space. Uh, this is something that I have uh, practiced forever, uh, sharing the space with others and, you know, letting them know that your voice matters as well. It's not just this person that's leading, but your voice matters as well. Uh, well, it has been a great week this week. Um, I have enjoyed all of the messages. I have enjoyed um, the growth spurts that come along with it. And I think, you know, eventually you get to a season where you realize, you know what, this is my set place. This is, this is the place that I'm in right now. And when the Lord sees fit to move further, he will do that. So I'm going to learn how to relax in the moment. And being able to relax in the moment gives you a little bit more elasticity, you know, uh, to where you, because you let the Lord move you as he wants to move you, not the way you want to move, you know, even in the midst of the waiting seasons that we go through. So uh, we're going to close out this morning with our giving. Y'all, uh, the Lord placed on my heart last night, when it comes down to giving, I want to stick to one place when it comes down to giving. And uh, I think it, I think it helps us to stay in that particular vein. There's a scripture in Ephesians 3, and I think the verse is, is 22, I mean, uh, verse 20. And we're going to sow on this throughout the remainder of our, our time together. Uh, he talks about now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within, within us. God, stretch us, take us where we need to be. Now unto him. That's what I do. I present my gifts now unto him. 
that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. You know, I got some things. I think last night we used a word or a scripture. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered into your heart just yet. The things that God has prepared for, I'm paraphrasing, but the Lord, he will reveal it by the spirit, only by the spirit, only until you get in that vein. And so what we want to do, we want to get into a, in, into that, into that vein of reciprocity, you know, to where we, we got to get in a movement. You know what I mean? Get your feet planted up on a thing. And I want to stay planted in the house of God. I want to stay planted in this particular place. Now unto him. That is a, you're going to know Ephesians 3 and 20 by heart. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think, or above all we can ask or think, because it's not just about me, according to the power that work is within me. The very moment that something hits my spirit, let me tell you something, that, that is, that that's a seed of power. You know, when, when I get exposed to a new area, my seed is working right there. I didn't just get into that place for nothing. When somebody comes in and blesses you and does something for you that's unexpected or whatever, now unto him, that, that's what you'll say instead of just saying thank you. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly. When you get in that courtroom, now unto him that is able to, to, to now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask. So I think, see, I've already done the works because the bible says after you've done the will of god you'll receive the promise of god now unto him that is able see every time the enemy want to come in and try to throw something throw you off or whatever ephesians 3 and 20 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think there's a power that's working down on the inside of me that i know not uh so we plant our seeds on the ground on behalf of that god i need to get in the flow Matter of fact, I need to get into a regular flow with you. And I want to be in this place where the abundance of God is just flowing all around. There's abundance of knowledge. It's not all about money. It's abundance of knowledge. It's abundance of peace. It's abundance of understanding. It's abundance of clarity. Sometimes I just need to get clarity about a thing, how to go about doing it. And though I may listen, sometimes I'll sit down and waddle in for a moment, but now unto him that is able you know, to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask sort of thing. So those of you that want to sow this morning, y'all go right ahead. Matter of fact, anytime in the midst of what we are doing, you can always sow into the ministry because this is what you want to do. Lord, I want to get my feet on the ground and get planted there. Amen. Uh, I think we all have the links that when it comes down to sowing, you guys can get those seeds on the ground planted and secured in God. That is so true, Faith. Everything that we do, we need to make sure that this thing is securing God. My teaching is securing God. My showing up, my answers, they are securing God. See, we need to move to a place in our walk with God. It's finished. That may be some of your words. It, it's finished. It's done. Because now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think according to the power that work within. There's a scripture that goes behind. He said to him, be glory to the church of church by Christ Jesus throughout all the ages, the world without end. Until the day I die, the Lord is going to continue to be there with me no matter what. Amen. Let's stabilize. All right. Any last word from anybody before we dismiss? You know that what they say in the club, last call. <laughs> any last words from anybody this morning? One. Two. Uh, good morning. It's Kathy. Kathy as well. <laughs> uh, I just got one, two words to say. Uh, we need to go see Bishop Blake and John Hanna. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, both of them. John, John Hanna is going to be here in Dallas in June. For any of y'all that want to go see him, he's going to be at Grace Cathedral. He's going to be there for uh, their conference. So, and uh, yeah, and Bishop Blake. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Let's get ready to dismiss. Want to thank y'all for your seeds that's being sown. And those of y'all that are getting your seeds prepared, want to thank y'all always for staying in that vein at all times. And uh, Father, we just thank you and bless you even on today. Uh, Father, these seeds in our heart, they are multiplying in such a way. Father, I think that we've received so much since the beginning of this year. Uh, Father, that will take us throughout eternity. You know, just never have I been in a place like this. You know, I think that that's Tamla Mann. Never have I seen it working like this. And uh, Father, I pray that you would teach us how to bottle those things up. You know, how to 
learn, first of all, how to relax in this new space. We finally came into company with people that had our same DNA. And Father, we want to use this time well. First of all, we want to stop to say thank you. Thank you for hearing our cries. Thank you for attending to the moaning and groaning. Sometimes we fussed it out, but thank you that you were able to interpret it. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, that when we send it out one way, the, the interpreter knows how to change it around because we learn from the failures. We learn how to call those things that be not of the, as though they already are. So we call the abundance of blessings into our lives. Whatever it is that we stand in need of, Father, you said to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men even give unto our bosom? Sometimes we have to start, you know, the flow taking place in our life. Whatever it is that we need in our lives, even on today, we start that flow of reciprocity. Father, we get into circulation whether it be our finances, whether it be goodwill, whether it be forgiveness, whatever, we start the flow so that those things can come back to us as well. So thank you for teaching us how to be good stewards over what it is that you have given to us. Thank you for teaching us how to share God. You know, we don't come in this world to do life by ourselves, but we come in to also make life better for others. Well, we thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for the promises of God. They are yes and they are amen. And Father, never have you seen the righteous forsaken. That's what David said. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor any of his seed begging for bread. But Father, you are such a healer. You are such a deliverer. You are such a way maker. We know that even this too, you shall make a way out of it. So Father, we say thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph in every area of our life. May not look like it right now, but thanks be unto God who always calls us to triumph, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that work within. Eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered our heart. It hasn't entered our heart because we haven't made space for it. But faith is the substance of things we hope for. So it has not entered our heart just yet, the things that we have, that we will receive, but it will be revealed by the spirit of God. Open up the eyes of our understanding, Lord God. Open up the capacity of our heart to receive. Let that receiving and giving be hand in hand with one another because in the end we'll win if we do not quit. We thank you already in advance for what you do. Th thank you for a wonderful weekend that we're getting ready to walk into. Father, let the grace of mercy, the mercy, grace and mercy of God be upon us. Watch over our children, watch over our mouths, Lord God, because we shall have whatsoever we say. And Lord bless us as we take this time to be with our family and friends. Bring us back together again as a family unit. We spend, uh, we send blessings over uh, Pastor Walker as she comes in on, on Monday to deliver the word for us. We pray that your grace and mercy be with her and allow her to speak that word that we need that will help us to move into the next place in destiny. So Father, thank you in advance for what you're doing in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for receiving. For those of you that were winners this morning, I'll reach out to you guys a little bit later on to get your address. Make sure I've got the right addresses. Those books will be coming directly from you from Amazon. So look for it on next week. It should be delivered into your mailboxes or on your front step. So y'all be blessed. Have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. We'll see you back again on Monday to do it all over again. Now unto him that is able. Tell everybody that everywhere you go. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that's working within in Jesus name. Amen.